Hi, this is Riley. Today I'm going to show you a beginner's introduction to the interface of Bitwig Studio. So when we first open Bitwig, by default, we're going to get the dashboard. You can open some different templates. You could do your recent projects. We're going to create a new project, but first let's take a quick look at the settings and then audio. On Mac, it's simple. For 99% of cases, core audio will be great. And then you just select whether you're using something built in or whether you're using an audio interface here. And then this down here is where you would actually set up and name your inputs and outputs. And this should be by default, pretty okay. On Windows, things are unfortunately a bit more complicated. It's usually gonna be the WASAPI or Wasapi driver. And it'll usually, like when you first open Bitwig, be set to automatically select Windows default device. So whatever you have as your default device down in the speaker settings here is what it will use. So the only problem with WASAPI, it's cool that it automatically selects your output and the latency is okay, but you cannot record. It doesn't have an input device in Bitwig. It only has output. So I would recommend WASAPI if you're just working on your laptop and you just want to use the built-in speakers, probably fine. If you have an external interface and you want to be recording stuff, for now I would say just stick to WASAPI. We're not going to be doing any recording in these intro videos. We're just going to be clicking around the interface. So you just need to be able to get sound to your headphones or speakers. So I'm going to go back to Mortfeld and I'm going to do, which is, this is just my name and I'm going to do a new project. So if it says activate audio engine, you have to activate it to be able to hear stuff. So here we are in the first view of Bitwig Studio. So Bitwig has this interface with all these different panels. Um, what shows up on the top screen is selected down here, arrange, mix, arrange, mix. And you can toggle that with tab on your keyboard. So that's a mixer or the sequencers. So with Bitwig, there's two sequencers. I have both open right now, but you don't need to use both. You can use one or the other or a combination of the two. It's very flexible. Uh, I'm going to close this one so that we just see this one because it's a little simpler for starting to explain things. If I click on the tracks, notice that the name of that track comes up here and in this thing called the inspector. Whenever I click on it, information about it's going to show up. So I'm going to go here, click that plus sign, and I'm going to get what's called the pop-up browser. So in the pop-up browser, I can select what I want my new track to be because I just click that plus sign to make a track. I'm going to hit Bitwig in device locations here so that I'm just showing the built-in devices. And there's still a ton. So I'm going to search sampler. And there it comes up. Now, this little star here means that it's a favorite. So I really like the sampler. I use it all the time, so I have it favorited. You can simplify. I'm going to X this out so the search goes away. You can simplify what you're seeing by clicking favorites here and just see your favorites. What, so it's good to just, just set a bunch of favorites when you start to find things you like. So now I have a sampler open. And I'll go down here, browse samples. Now it opens another pop-up browser, but this one's just samples. This is just a flat list, so there's tons of stuff in here. It's kind of confusing. So I'm gonna go into this one and filter what I'm seeing. Classic drum machines, sure. I like how that doesn't really even sound like a clap. Um, gonna go enter. If you have your caps lock on, if you have an instrument track and you have your caps lock on and 
you've got it record enabled. When you click these buttons, you're going to play notes in. And if you click X or Z or Z, that changes the octave. And the C and V change the velocity. So the MIDI volume. If I click up here, that will turn on the metronome. If I click spacebar, it plays. But if I click this button first, record, any tracks that are record enabled are going to record when I push play. So that's just something simple. If I click that, I can go clip and quantize. That's going to quantize it so that it's in time. And I want to just listen to this repeating. So I'm going to click this guy and I turn off the click. This will set the loop on, which is this bar here at the top. So I can just drag that. It was already at the right length. So, so notice now that I have a clip here, if I double click the clip, we get it down here in the editor. If I click up here and double click, we go back to the device view. So just like on the top here, when you push tab, you're switching between what's happening on the top. On here, there's these uh, different symbols. So that's the editor. This is automation. This is device. And this is a little mixer panel that can show up but only when mix isn't selected here. Mostly, you're just going to be switching between editing the clips and the devices automatically, depending what you click on. So the bottom browser, most of the time, will just follow what you're doing. Uh, but you might want to intentionally switch by clicking these things. And the keyboard shortcuts are D. Oh, I need to turn off caps lock. D for device. E for edit. A for automation. And M for mixer. So it can be useful to know those so you can kind of fly around the program a little quicker. So in Bitwig, if you're on the top of a clip, or the bottom of a clip, it changes. And same here, if you're on the top, you're going to select the clip and the bottom clicking is going to make these time selections. And it's like that with everything in Bitwig. So if I go down to the note editor, I can zoom out by the way, by grabbing the top where it says the time and clicking and dragging. You can also do that with a laptop if you have a trackpad, like by pinching and zooming or uh, by scroll wheeling with the option or alt key with a normal keyboard. So again, like I was saying, if I go down here, if I go in the middle, I select the clip. If I go in the middle and drag, I move the clip up and down. If I go on the edge, I drag up the length of the clip. Also, if you go up and down or left and right, you move the notes around. And there's a very useful keyboard shortcut, control or uh, command, if you're on Mac, like me, command D will duplicate the clip one after the other. And that works up here as well. So duplicate and there are duplicated it. But what happened there is this doesn't cover the whole length of what it should be in relation to the time signature. So if I play that back, I 
Well, it sounds okay, but it's not uh, what I want. So I'm going to drag this over to where it should be. But what I could do is if I make a time selection on the bottom like that, and then I do Command J or Consolidate, that'll create a clip that's the whole length of the time selection. And then if I hover on the bottom, I get a loop so I can loop it. You can do the same thing by just dragging on the top of the clip. And now I can loop it at this size that I just set. So top resizes the clip, bottom loops the clip at its current length. The consolidate function is just cool to know because you can use it um, if you have multiple MIDI clips. So I'll create another one. Let's add some notes in there. If I drag like a time selection like this, and then I do Command J. Now I've just created one MIDI clip that's both of those. So those are two different ways to deal with resizing or combining clips. And if I turn off loop up here, And if I were to consolidate again, Command-J, now it's no longer a loop. It's one long clip that has those repetitions in it. So if I go over to now back in the edit window, I could delete things. And make variations. So I took this short loop and really quickly made it into a couple variations. So again, dragging on the top, it doesn't loop. Dragging on the bottom, it does. So if you have these combined clips like this and you wanted to undo that and, and have them smaller, you could click on the lower part of the clip like this to create a time marker and then do Command E or Control E if you're on Windows. That splits it into two clips. And now if I were to go drag on the lower half, I'm looping that one. Or if I drag on the lo lower half, I'm looping this one. So these become their own clips if you do that. Another way to do that is to click and go to the time menu that comes up and do split. Obviously, that's a lot of moving around with your mouse. I think it's much better in this case to try and remember that keyboard short shortcut. So Command and E or Control and E, depending on your Windows or Mac or Linux. I think it's Control E on Linux as well. And another thing that's important is if you double click, it's always going to do something most of the time. If you double click here, we're going to the device view like we showed before. Double click here, you're going to the edit view. Double click in an empty MIDI area and it creates an empty MIDI clip that you can then start to add notes into by double clicking in this area. And if you double click in this empty area, it will open the pop-up browser so you can add a new track. So good to remember, you can also select a pen tool here, which you also get by th button three. And one is the normal general purpose pointer tool and three goes to a drawing tool. And with the drawing tool, you can draw in clips. And notice that there is a separate tool for this window and this window, uh, this part of the window. So because you'll probably want to have different tools depending. So depending what you're focused on when you push the button. So if you have the pen tool selected down here, you're just drawing. 
So there is a number of these different tools and you can definitely use them if you find that useful. I find that usually I just stick with the pointer tool because you can do everything with the pointer tool, usually by double clicking or just making sure you're grabbing the right area of a clip or note. And you have a time selection tool, so it doesn't matter where you click, you're getting a time selection. We can duplicate the time selection, Command D, we'll duplicate everything in the time selection. We can uh, also get options from here, duplicate. And when we make a time selection, we have this thing called time. We can choose to remove time or duplicate time. So that'll do some different interesting things. For instance, if we do this, make a time selection and remove time, that's actually moved everything that comes after. So you can use that to chop out a whole section of your song. Make a time selection with the time selection tool. And go to the time menu. Remove time. And you will notice that the where it says time here. Oh, I, now I need to go back to the pointer tool. If I click this. Now this is clip. If I click over here, now it says track. If I double click the track and I open up a device here, let's say I'll go make sure I'm in audio effects, make sure Bitwig selected. Let's go down to the filter. So I click here. Now it says device, and there's some other options like save preset to library. Whatever we click on, we also get this inspector track here that shows us details. So if we click on the clip, we could say turn down the volume of that clip, turn down the level of all the notes in that clip, and we can change lots of things with the timing. We can mute the clip so that it gets grayed out. It's still there, but it doesn't, it's not active. And you can do that with notes too. So I'll switch back to the pointer for the note editor. And if I make a selection of notes where I click on a note, we get info about that note. And if we right click on it, we can mute that note which you can also get here, just like with clips. So there's a lot of similarities between the way these objects in Bitwig work. So the notes, individual notes have all this information that you can access here in the inspector view and the full clips have all these things that you can access from inside the clip view. And they're, they're similar, they're similar. If we were to go over here, we can see that there's a separate browser. So this is like the pop-up browser, but the different thing here is you can bank it somewhere and just leave it there. So I'm going to go to samples here by clicking. I'm going to go down to, it's per, uh, I don't even know. I don't know what, choose anything. I don't know what you will have installed, but I'm just going to grab some percussion. So we can then drag that onto an audio track and zoom in there. And I can do that. I, I, I don't want that to be like that. I want it to be bigger. So I'm going to make a time selection like this. I'm going to do command J. So now I have this container that holds that audio file. If I click on it and look down here, you can see the audio file doesn't take up the full length of this clip. It's still just that tiny audio file, but up here I have this uh, container that's an audio container. And if I clip on that, uh, click on that, I have all these options just like I have for MIDI clips. And they're different options because it's an audio clip. So you can create a fade in, you can uh, 
pan it, you can trans, you can pitch it up. And just like with notes and audio clips, you can mute it and yeah, you can color it. That's where you color the tracks as well. So because I've created a container that's this certain length, I can go here and drag with the loop when I drag on the bottom of the clip and I can loop this out. It's also worth mentioning if you do want to, like I mentioned, uh, change the pitch, you need to make sure that the mode is not set to raw. It needs to be set to one of the stretching ones. Something else that's cool with audio clips is if you're hovering on the top, you can actually turn down the volume of the whole clip or turn it up by dragging it. You'll see it light up white. Going back to what we were talking about earlier about the time selection, if I have the time selection tool and most of the time you can just stay with the pointer tool. You can double click to get a lot of the other functions. And if you're just dragging in the right place, you'll get the exact same type of time selection that you would get with the time selection tool. But the time selection tool just makes it kind of easier to create a big time selection drag. So notice though, if I make a time selection like this and I go over to remove time, I'm only removing time on this track where the time selection is. So if I, I'm going to undo that. If I actually do want to make a change to the whole song, I would just drag over all the whole song. Remove time. Now that's going to remove every track. So in summary, when you click this button or when Bitwigs first opened, you get the dashboard where you have your audio settings and all the other settings for the software. In this area, we have our sequencer and there's two, but this one's fine to start with. You can make selections. You can double click to create stuff. You have some different tools. And when you double click slash select things in here, the editing or browsing will show up here and a bunch of information will show up here. On the right side of the interface, we have another browser. It can also be different, some different information windows, but for the most part, the browser is what most people would use here. And then on the top, we have some menus that are going to do different things depending what we have selected. Over here you have your transport, which is your play, stop, start, all that sort of stuff, things to do with recording or playing back. It'll look different depending uh, what you have it set up as. And file is just your new project. Save as, you can open the dashboard here, or go right to settings. So this is where all your functions for projects are. And anything in any of these menus that has a pin, if you click the pin, that's going to add that to the menu that's always open. So if you want to have the save always there, you can do that. For me, I have a lot of these uh, transport function and clip launcher things pinned, but you might not want that. And in the middle here is where we have information. We can change the tempo. We can click on this to see a little graph of the uh, CPU performance from the computer. We can change the time signature. We can go to different places in the song. And uh, we can put on the metronome. We can toggle the loop. And yeah, I think that about covers all the basic interface stuff for Bitwig. So I would recommend you just try clicking around and editing in MIDI data and stuff um, just with the mouse. And something that's fun about Bitwig is it's really easy to use it with controllers and stuff. But I, 
I think it's good to try and just start with clicking around because you're going to get farther um, if you kind of understand the basics. And yeah, want if you want to add anything new, just look for one of these plus signs and it'll bring up the browser where you can add anything that you'd want. Devices, presets, multi-samples, samples. Hopefully helpful.